My dear elegant ladies, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk to you about something so important as things that elegant ladies never do in the bedroom and I'm going to tell you what you should be doing instead. And if you're wondering if there's some form of sex video, then I'm sorry to disappoint you that it's not. I'm talking about bedroom etiquette, but ladies, this is equally as important as sex etiquette. So let's take that topic in a different video. But today I really want to focus about what you should be doing in the bedroom. And this has nothing to do whether you're single or not, this is about self-respect and to have the best success in life. And speaking about success, at the last point, I will be sharing with you my project for 2020 that I also want you to copy from so that you achieve the best success in this coming year and more. So make sure you watch until the end. Let's dive into number one, which is probably the most obvious one for this entire list, but I just want to get it out of the way. Elegant ladies never wear ugly clothing in the bedroom. And this is regardless if you are in a relationship or not. Now, for obvious reasons, you don't want to look like a rag doll in front of your partner. That's why an elegant lady never wear horrible clothing in front of her partner or in the bedroom. She doesn't sleep in some washed out a cotton underwear or cartoon printed pajamas. No, she's a grown up woman. So she dresses in beautiful silk, beautiful lace and fabrics that don't only make her feel comfortable, but also make her look beautiful. There are such things as clothing that is both comfortable and beautiful. I don't know why people tend to think that just one way or another. No, ladies, you can actually have it all. In my personal bedroom, I wear things like silk pajamas, beautiful silk and lace camisoles. I have a beautiful jersey fabric um, robe as well. Very feminine, very elegant. I really think that it's important to embrace your femininity in the bedroom. You want to attract your partner when he sees you, especially in such an intimate environment as your bedroom. And if you are single, you do want to feel like a woman and kind of have that energy with you when you leave your bedroom and start your day and when you go to sleep because this energy you bring it with you in the rest of the day so if you have a kind of neglectful energy then how are you going to really attract the best possible mate you want to have that aura of femininity because that's when men start desiring you number two and another obvious one that we really need to get out of the way, and this is definitely, especially if you are in a relationship or you are married, but of course, if you are single, this is again about self-respect. Elegant ladies, you always have to be freshened up when you go to bed. You cannot go to bed, especially if you are in a relationship, being dirty. No man likes that and a lot of cultures actually value cleanliness. So you really have to take that into account. I know that you might think like, okay, but Anna, why are you talking about such basic things as taking a shower and so on? Well, that's because a lot of ladies are actually neglecting this, believe it or not. It's not because they don't know what they should be doing. It's about that they're too lazy to do it. And that's why I said, okay, if you're single, even though I don't recommend if you're single, but if you are in a relationship, make that little effort. If it requires to shower twice a day, then shower twice a day. Be fresh with your partner, smell good. If you have some spontaneous one-on-one, -on -one, you don't want to excuse yourself first and run into the bathroom and then come back and then kind of start the momentum again. Ladies, be on top of your game. It doesn't cost you that much. Number three, and I think now a lot of you are going to feel guilty. Elegant ladies never do other things in bed than rest or sleep. And I'm not talking about the naughty stuff here. I'm talking about elegant ladies. They don't eat in bed. They don't cut their nails in bed. They don't watch endless hours of TV in bed or they work from bed on their laptop. These type of things. The bed is truly there for resting. And actually, if you have issues with your sleep, like I have had in my past and I still have occasionally, then it's really, really important to only use your bed for sleeping. 
I do really recommend this because I only use my bed these days for sleeping. I am definitely guilty to have done things like working from bed or living my life in bed, literally. But those were the good old days. Now I have evolved and I have pulled myself together and now I only sleep in bed and that's it. It does actually help your sleep your mind kind of starts taking your bed more seriously when you get into bed because it knows it's time to start producing melatonin so that I fall asleep because this bed is only about sleep. Number four, and you might be wondering now, is she serious? Well, yes, I am serious. I've actually spoken to people like this. Number four is that elegant ladies never sleep in their active wear. And you ladies know how touchy I am when it comes to the subject of active wear. I don't like when people fly in airplanes planes in active wear and so on and I definitely don't like it when people go to bed in active wear. So you might be wondering now well why would somebody even go to sleep in active wear? The reason for that is there are ladies who wake up early in the morning and first thing they do is to go training in the morning and because active wear tend to be comfortable they think it makes absolute sense to go to bed in the clothes they will be training the next morning. Basically it will be easier for them to get out of bed so they decide that, okay, I might as well sleep in my active wear. I think that's gross. I really do. Because we sweat at nighttime. You don't have to sweat a lot. We people, we all sweat different amounts, but we all sweat at night. So I just think that starting your day by going training in sweaty clothing, it's not necessarily an elegant thing to do. So that's why I don't recommend it. If you're guilty, then change that bad habit. Number five. This is one of the bedroom habits that I changed, I think, about five years ago. But I'm so happy I did this change because I really do see a difference. I'm talking about elegant ladies, they never sleep with cotton pillowcases. Instead, elegant ladies only sleep using silk pillowcases. This is such an amazing life hack. I really do recommend everybody to sleep with a silk pillowcase and it's not going to cost you a fortune. Instead, this is one of the best anti-wrinkle treatments you can do for your face because we do sleep a lot with our face down in the pillow maybe it's on the side or maybe well I guess some people <laughs> sleep like face down although I don't think I do but we definitely do sleep with the face on the side and um, when your skin keeps touching your pillow for eight hours a day and you sometimes rub your face into the pillow then of course you are going to wrinkle your own skin this way so it makes absolute logic sense for that reason you should be using a silk pillowcase because your skin will be gliding nicely on the pillow but not to the point that it will glide off the pillow because I know some ladies are kind of worried about that's what's going to happen. Same thing works as well for your hair. Your hair actually ends up breaking less as a result and uh, you, it becomes less static. I only sleep on silk pillowcases and uh, I love it. I really really recommend you ladies to get one and like I said they don't cost a lot but it is a great investment in your beauty routine so think about that. Number six. I don't often talk about my personal life in terms of my relationship, but here I'm going to open up a little bit for you. So elegant ladies, they don't bring in any devices into their bedroom. And I'm actually talking about this new rule that we have in my home. Although I'm not going to lie, ladies, I have broken this rule, although my partner hasn't. And I'm actually making new effort with this rule in 2020 because it's a tough one to break. So we decided that we were going to implement no devices in the bedroom policy simply because it's healthier that way, it doesn't interrupt your sleep as much and also it's just a better way of living and sleeping as well. Also it improves your relationship too. I mean what happens when you put your device next to you on the bed? Notifications come up, maybe somebody sends you a message, maybe somebody calls, whatever, and your screen might light up or you forgot to switch off your phone so your phone made a sound or whatever it is. Small things like that interrupt your sleep when you're sleeping. Even if it's just a little bit of light, light really 
really does affect your sleep so it's really important to think about that but also the the fact that we end up spending more time on our devices when we have them next to us in bed I mean we all kind of have this picture of a couple in bed both on their phones you know before going to sleep instead of spending time with each other and that's such a love and relationship killer for that reason it's so important to leave your device out of the room but also how many of you are guilty to starting your day basically the first thing you do when you open your eyes is to take your phone into your hand and start checking start checking your emails start checking your social media going through instagram watching people's stories you know all of that and isn't that such an unhealthy way of starting your own day I am so, so guilty to this, and this is exactly why I have a second attempt of changing this really bad habit, because yeah, we started our policy last year with no devices in the room, and guess who broke that? Me. My partner did really well. I was the one who couldn't stop bringing in my phone into the bedroom, but now I've stopped again, so... Fingers crossed it will work this time. You know, it got me thinking. I mean, surely I wake up, I kiss my partner good morning, but then I start browsing through my phone and I start my day by watching other people's lives, like other people's stories and what they did yesterday and what they wrote to me and so on. And I just don't understand why I set my day with the foreign energy. Why the morning is not about myself and my partner perhaps, even just my myself in terms of positivity, in terms of what my goal is for the day, what tone I want to set for the day. It is so unhealthy to indulge in your phone the first thing in the morning when the first thing in the morning should be all about you. So we have reached the last but so 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 important point and I do want to make a little disclaimer. I am not an expert on this topic, but I do believe in it. And this is my mission for 2020. If anybody who is based in Switzerland or Geneva and has any input where I can find a person who does this, please do write to me. Ladies, I am talking about elegant ladies. They do value Feng Shui for their bedroom. And I am all about Feng Shui in my home in 2020 because ladies, I believe so much in energy because honestly my work with energy has definitely been one of the key secrets to my success in life. Everything that I ever wished for came to realization because I have been very consistent with my energy work. You all know I'm very much into law of attraction. I do a lot of that work but you know I realized one day that I haven't been doing much when it comes to Feng Shui and Feng Shui is an Asian type of energetical work. Work, but I do believe in this too. Why? Because it's energy. So I'm not an expert in Feng Shui, but please do start a discussion about it in the comments. If anybody is doing any form of Feng Shui, what have your results been? What is kind of the secrets of it? And maybe you have some hidden tips and tricks you can share with us. Now, to kind of summarize it in a nutshell, Feng Shui is all about how you place items in your home, in what direction and so on. There's some kind of key fundamental practices around it to kind of maximize the energy flow in your house. And why is the bedroom so important? That is because bedroom is by far, besides perhaps maybe your office, depending how many hours you work, but bedroom is probably the top one, top two places where you spend the most time at. You sleep for eight hours a day. So you do get absorbed by a lot of the energy that's in your bedroom. And if you have positive, healthy energy in that environment, then you are going to have that in your life. And especially bedroom represents the health and well-being of a person, but also the relationship part in the person's life. So regardless if you're single or in a relationship, you do want to make the best possible feng shui in your bedroom to kind of have the best results in your love life but of course we all know that we are nothing without our health and if your health is not in order then you really should do something shui in your bedroom because that's where you get your rest and that's where you want to maximize good energy coming your way when you are getting your rest so that you are the most healthy and the most strongest to take on any form of missions that you have in life any goals whatsoever maybe it's level up goals maybe it's career goals 
goals, dating goals, life goals, whatever it is. If you still haven't watched my most popular video of all times, 10 things elegant ladies never wear, then make sure you watch that video because I will see you there. And yes, I do talk about active wear in that video.